Okay, I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Assessors to order for Monday, July 1st, 2024. First item on the agenda is approved minutes of prior meeting. We have the minutes. Oh, Ashley approved both the June 17th and the June 24th minutes, which are before us. Already, I'll entertain a motion. No. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Uh, new business. We have no members of the public in attendance. Nobody here mm -hmm. to comment. And so let's go right into discussion of reevaluation process. So we are. One second. Um, we are in the process of negotiating the contract for the vendor, um, Tyler, and issued a loan, I believe. I'll scratch that. So we're working on, on the details of the contract between the company's attorney and the town attorney for just some little details, you know how that works. Um, things like the venue, the company says the venue right. for litigation should be Texas, and needless to say, the town says it should be Massachusetts. Right. So just little things like that that are they're working out. Um, and we just submitted some information and reports to our DOR representative, and so the process begins. So that's where we're at. Okay. Um, review of DOR evaluation work plan? Um, the work plan hasn't changed, but it, it's expected that the dates will because the dates were all based on the contract being signed already, which it isn't. So we have to see what the company has to adjust. Um, I believe it's going to be, we had planned to finish everything by September, but I suspect that since the contract's a month late, that the September date will be pushed out to October. What's the, um, like, is there a drop dead time? I don't know how everything backs out, you know, from from the beginning of the year to, uh, how, actually, how do things back out? When does, like, what's the thing that has to be absolutely sign, done and signed and everything? Well. What's the end of the process? The end is the date that the vendor that prints the, bills says they must have it by that date or they can't go out in time that's really the like the absolute last okay date and so we work from that date back and then plan when do we have to submit the information to them and then when do we have to submit to the DOR for the final approval and then prior to that when do we have the classification hearing and prior to that when do we submit the preliminary information to DOR so we kind of work back to the okay. Um, so we generally will have, which I don't have in, off the top of my head right now, but we generally set the classification date with the select board to say that's when we're going to have it. And that's typically uh, when? December. So, December? Yeah, like early December. Well, it's usually early December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, I guess so a question I have is um, the bills would be for uh, dated what date? Are they January 1st of 2026? Um, these are for 2025, the so, bills that are due in February, and actually it won't okay, be February. So we'll we'll be be in January 3rd or something. Okay, right, depending upon what, what day the uh, business day falls on. But I, I guess my question would be, do we, is this process going to begin in with enough time to generate the revaluations to issue the bills dated January 1st, 2025? <laughs> It is a, the schedule is expected that it would all work, yeah. And when will they start, um, when will they start looking at properties? So once the contract's signed, yeah. then they'll begin like next day. So it'll be maybe within the next two? It should be 
sooner, I would hope, a matter of weeks. August. Um, when did they say there'd be a start time? Well, um, when did the vendor? Yeah, we had originally planned for beginning date of mid June, assuming that the bid were open and the contract was agreed on, then the original plan was mid June. So that's a bit missed already. Right? So yeah, so we're thinking that if we can get it for mid July, then it'd still be good. And how many people of theirs will be? How many properties will they, will they look at, and how many people will they have in the town? Um, and they have to do this in every town. They do it in multiple towns. They have a team of people. It's mostly done electronically, not in person, um, because of the technology that we have, the ability to look at, and they have very sophisticated software to be able to look at properties and look around them and look up and down on them and so forth. Um, there are measurements that you can do up to, I believe it was eight inches or something. And anybody that has Siri or Alexa in their homes, they can actually come and do those. No, they yeah, can't do that. They yeah, can't yeah. do that. Um, if you go to GIS, you'd be shocked at how accurate yeah. all this stuff is. Right. They have a measuring ruler, right. they have everything. How many properties will they be selecting for actual on-site inspections? Um, well, we're doing a lot of it. So we're we're reviewing the sales. Um, I, I don't have, again, I don't have off the top of my head the actual numbers. Okay. But, um, right. but part of it is to review certain statistical amount numbers of them. And how are we going to be dealing with, we had the pre a brief discussion uh, several weeks ago about Mass DOR looking for us to put a greater value on land. Yes. And and when when will and with who we, we, will we have that discussion and how will that move forward? Because we're you know we're going to be uh, you know obviously this is running quickly. We're revaluing the whole town. Um, you know how is this going to play out from the resident notification and input pr process? And would we expect, and I'm jumping ahead with this question, you know, we've been seeing somewhere in the range of 60 to 80 abatement applications a year. Is this year going to cause a dramatic increase in those? So the question on land is, um, as part of the revaluation, we always revisit the land. DOR has pointed out that they're going to be looking more carefully at it. So, and as it turns out, I was at a training seminar this past week that specifically addressed the process of land valuation. It's something that I've trained on and learned multiple times in the past, but this was on a process called the land residual, land residual method of valuation, which essentially says value the entire property, calculate what the buildings are and subtract them and that leads you to the land. That's why it's called land residual. Um, so we had some discussion. I had the opportunity to meet with the instructor after to talk about our situation in particular with the teardowns. And they do a lot of work in Massachusetts. He, he and his company does a lot of work in the Boston area. So we were able to talk about what that specific um, situation is with teardowns and the values and so on. How many towns are similar to NATO insofar as... The yeah. number of tear downs. I was just thinking that. Yeah, it's a, yeah. a dozen. We've already it's a dozen. Yeah. Is it like thirty? Yeah. I would think yeah. it would be something. It's a dozen. Like you're saying that. Yeah, the it... mine is just pure. Okay. You yeah. Know, pure guess. What you say? I would say most of the. If you just take the relatively better off communities surrounding, right. get one or two towns away from Route 128. That'd be thing. Yeah. yeah. Chester, but don't yeah. forget about the Cape. With Chester, eight. oh, is there a tear down activity oh, on the yeah. Cape? Kind of that upper cape, Falmouth, uh, particularly okay. with Waterview or Waterfront, because I'm doing a lot of those. Right. But I would assume, yeah, meet up Newton Wellesley, Dover to some extent. Newton, uh, Westwood, Dover, not so much. And Westwood Newton, a little. Newton doesn't seem to have as many tear downs. Lexington, right? Concord. Lexington, Concord. Winchester. No, Concord, no. Concord hasn't hit Winchester? Winchester, yet. Winchester, yes. Milton? No. Not so much? No, Milton actually. Price wise, when we were growing up, it was kind of a great town, and not so much now. Well, Milton's a real mix of, you know, you got well, that's, that's you the got big houses on Canton Ave, and then you got East Milton. You yeah. Know, it's it's, a, it's yeah. a very. Uh, well, listen, you want to jump in? Sorry. <laughs> Do you know the answer? 
Do you know the answer? Doing great. What, doing what is great. the what is the uh, <laughs> teardown universe of? There's probably somewhere. Well, because I think what we would want to do um, is if it's a dozen and there are comparable dozen communities and clearly communities around us that you know, let's take a look at what they're doing. And I know we stand alone by the same token, everything well, I know. So I think if we have the resources to do that, it's a nice check. But yeah. if we don't have the resources to do that, um, I'd say it's low on the priority list. It's well, a nice to have. Well, remember, every every community is has a, is on a five-year thing. So in theory, right. roughly 70 communities per, I mean, it's probably not quite that community. I'm sure Boston versus Monroe is different. But um, they're not all the same year. This way, and they're not all the same, they're rolling right. So, there's probably some teardown community that's been through this last year and probably won the year before. Yeah. I think Wellesley's on the same schedule as us, but um, there should be communities that have done this in the last. Year. Are we sort of on the right thought process, or are we like off? No, you're doing off? great. The um, the company, well, the, the advantage of having an outside appraisal company is that they bring a more global perspective to it. This particular company. And the individuals working on this project um, do a lot of work in Massachusetts. The two main folks, the project manager and the assistant, both are former Massachusetts assessing employees. They've worked for towns doing this process. And they work in Boston area uh, places. But to your point, it's any community that has a limited amount of undeveloped land and that has particular amenities that are of benefit to people. So waterfront is definitely one, proximity to the city is another one. And so those types of communities generally will have some level of, um, of teardown activity because the, if, if you wanna be there and you want a house, that's the only way. So what you're saying is that they will apply the same through the lens that they look at last year's community that's in similar, right. similar to Natum, the same lens and they will come up with the same Calculation. Yeah, and yeah. and it's a and and the DOR representative that we're working on, she's doing multiple ones each year and okay. has that same perspective. The Department of Revenue has um, statistical um, analyses in place for us to do that. So there's all sorts of information and procedures and checks and so forth to okay. make sure that we're doing we're all doing this the way we should. And it's not while Needham does have a lot of teardown activity, the concept isn't unique and the, the valuation process of land is, isn't is unique in any case. I, I think the difference here is just that with the level activity of activity that we've had, that we haven't been able to keep up with that number. But that's the purpose of the five-year revaluation is to do that reset. So, Question on the timeline. So in order for us to get the 2025 bills out that working backwards. When do they need to be mailed? You, you said it earlier. Um, they mail well the mail January first. They need they generally yeah. mailed the last week of December, so okay. that they're in I people's hands by this. by January first. Okay, um, and then in order for us to make that December classification. classification when does this project have to be drop dead completed by? Um, I think that we're going to have the classification earlier than, than December, at least that's the goal. And so to have the work done by October would be a benefit. So do we have that in writing in the contract? Um, we do have dates in the contract. And as I said, those are being re-evaluated so that we can look at Okay. You know, right. what, what we've had. So if October is kind of the drop dead date, because then you have to calculate the levy and all that stuff, right? Um, that's all part of the process at that okay. point. Yeah, that's just a computer. Level. Mm -hmm. Well, it is, you the... but you get a first round, and right, the right. computer's not always right. Right. And then well, you. Well, well and, we're, and you said that. Did yeah. you just say something like that? Yeah. I, did yeah. you just say the computer's not always right? right. The computer's not. Can always. take that back. They're hearing it. The house is, his, his house is going to be burned down. Right, exactly. I don't know why. 
I bought my first computer in 1982. Yeah, the There's a lot of garbage Apple that goes eight. in. Yeah. Well, that's you it. End yeah, up yeah. With garbage coming out. That's not the computer's wrong. It's we're wrong giving it information. Yeah. You know, so, AI, so, AI, I thought it's all. So, so theoretically, um, if you can remember the high points of the contract, mm -hmm. when should they be done? Um, you know, I think it's probably best if we review the dates. Perhaps the next meeting once we've okay reformatted them because that's what's review of appraisal yeah. vendor contract. Yes. Okay. So once we um, have that, okay, that, that's right. on the agenda for today. Um, yeah, and we we hoped to have it completed, but it's not yet. So, so the contract, in, in order for them to start the middle of July, contract has to be done by next week. No, um, no, no. You can have a letter of intent, and they can start. Yeah, I think that okay. the plan. Yeah. There was some discussion about that. To, have the town issue a letter of intent and they the vendors said that they would accept that and begin so what kind of a price that are they looking at um, that we can't been, talk about that. yeah that hasn't been confirmed yet oh so. okay i mean i don't even think you actually know right i was at the opening but the as, again the what the discussions are i'm not involved yeah. like, i would think that would be something that would be Fairly standard, seeing that so many communities have been through this process with this company. Yeah, that you know, based upon geographic size, number of, of properties for them to to evaluate. Um, yeah, yeah, but I'd be. You were asking a specific question. Okay, so let me ask a broader question, which is from zero to a million. What's what range? Yes, is the... it is between those two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I get the bill. Yeah. Yes. Is there a reason why for a desire for an earlier classification? I mean, is there a particular reason why? Is it just to get it out of December or um, is there some other? Is there something else that happens that makes life easier for someone if it's earlier? Well, it makes life easier for everyone. The, the, okay. the amount of. Yeah. So we're relying on, on multiple vendors the appraisal vendor, the um, accounting software vendor, the printers. We're relying on Department of Revenue. Okay. doing approvals by a certain date right. and the, we're making assumptions about the classification hearing generally they're resolved on the same night but there have been cases not necessarily need them but i've experienced cases where the classification hearing was continued and no decision was made okay which that was the purpose of my question yeah. we don't want to be pushed up against a deadline wall yeah. Will um, we with no we, margin of error? Yeah. Will we be signing the contract? Um, I believe. I believe you. I'm not sure. Okay. I, I need to check. I'd okay. be surprised if we do. Okay. Can will yes, when will we be able to see the contract? Um, once it's agreed and signed, if it if the town well, is we signing, sign it, well, if you're it. signing it, then you'll see it right before that. Excellent. But if um, I think it's purchasing that. Does that with the with the town manager? I think the town manager yeah. ultimately signs it. Yeah, because right. the bids all designate town manager. Review. So yeah. we'll we'll get you more details. And... Yeah, no comments to you from you. <laughs> this this I've learned. No, I don't intend to. There's a town attorney. Leave it to them. Not Anytime it. you put something in front of another attorney, I don't intend. To. You get two other opinions. Oh, yeah, three, right. four, oh, yeah, five. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I just want to flag one other thing. I don't know where the right place is for this. It sounds like we're kind of wrapping up on this. Yeah, um, whatever. Right but this is just more information. Any other business probably can be pulled aboard. Okay. Are we at that yet? We're up to that. Okay. All right. Well, I'll do this. Okay. Um, so I was asked to be on a panel just to answer any general questions uh, about ADUs. That was last week with the Housing Coalition. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So they had different people. Um, different things. So as part of this, I was looking up, well, how are ADUs done? And it seems very unclear. So Needham has, at least from 2020 to 2023, we have 10, eight, 12, I'm sorry, 12 ADUs. They're not going to have to go before the ZBA. So they're going to be a little harder to see, except that there is an annual, you're supposed to annually re-up the permit. Well, it's um, a building permit that had to have yeah. been taken out right. and but, filed with the building department, sent to the assessing department right. so that they indicate the value, right. the estimated value of the construction. Right. So there's supposed to be, uh, 
it's now going to be by right. So going forward, it's still going to go through the building department. building department because they still have to confirm things like, you know, the single residence character requirement, things like that. And we'll still have to be evaluated somewhere along the way. And then after that, which I think is unlike a typical two family house, I, I assume there's an annual um, recertification kind of process or an right. re which I think is mostly a formality. But I think it also could be the case that, you know, family, if, you know, if the relative moves out or something like that, and they decide, oh, we're not going to rent it or anything, we're just going to leave the door open between the units or something. I, I assume there's a way that you can just kind of pull back the, um, the ADU aspect of it. But so, but, but getting to the more relevant point here is that I looked at a number of the property cards relating to these 12 ADUs to see like, oh, where does it say ADU and where do I see all this information? And I couldn't find it. So it looks like we have to, and, and in some emails with uh, but, but Melissa, she said that she looked at it and just for kind of informational purposes, well, what if I recoded this as a two family instead of a one family and it, not, no difference came up. Yeah. Which seems unlikely. Right. Now an ADU I don't think so. An ADU is not a true two family because you can't condoize it. You can't move out and rent both units. Those two things are not allowed. So it doesn't, it shouldn't have the full value of a two family. In doing some a little bit of online research, and this is national, this is not like Massachusetts or anything like that. There is at least one article where guy was saying basically that that a four thousand dollar four thousand square foot single family home is going to be more valuable than a three thousand with a one thousand ADU. And part of the problem here now in Needham is we have no comps. Like there hasn't been a sale. We do have some new construction though, which could be of interest because we have new construction where the ADU is in there as built. And in fact two of the people on the panel had built a, a new um, house with an ADU for the one of the moms. Mm -hmm. And so she's living in that. Um, so that does provide one data point. But I noticed, for instance, in looking at the property cards, it says kitchens still said one instead of two. It still said single family, which may actually be the most accurate. We have to decide whether the most accurate thing is single family or two. Well, I think because there is no... Because right now, there is the, no current code cards, the current cards, um, you actually don't have a kitchen. You don't have a stove. Moving forward, you can have a stove. I thought you couldn't have it on the old well, in-law in by, right. special by special permit, you can. Okay. Right, but it seems to me that if you have an ADU, there should be some indication in the record that says there's an ADU. Here's the square footage of the ADU. There's a separate... Well, by definition, an ADU has a full kitchen. I mean, basically, to be an ADU, you have to have you have to have an, no more than nice space 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 different things inside the in, inside the 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 You have to basically have an external entrance, external of the main unit. So, in other words, you could have like this one house actually has a single entryway, but once you get into the entryway, there's two different doors, which a lot of two families have. You know. Um, a lot of triple deckers even have stuff like that where there's different doors yeah. once you get into an entryway. But you have to have, um, and you have to basically have separate facilities for bathing, cooking, um, uh, and sleeping, basically. So it really is like a separate apartment. But there should be some indication in the database. I think there should be. Or, I agree with that. There should be an indication. And there should be some evaluation. The valuation, I think, is most likely not going to be identical to a single family home just with like the total square foot it won't be identical to a two family because it's not quite the same as a two it's family. like a hybrid it's a hybrid and i don't know maybe the state this is this is getting way off a bit but i looked at the classifications all the 10 classifications mm -hmm. and there's single family manufactured home condo two family three family four family or four to eight and above eight and that's how the classification is there are a couple of reserve codes I don't know, maybe the state should consider looking at a reserve code, with, which would be like single family with ADU or two family, because some places you can have a two family plus an ADU. We don't have- we Well, don't let me interject there. one thing, Mike. You know, until we get to detached ADUs, right now, you know, the way I would look at this and, and is that um, 
it's within the envelope of the existing house, is the space that's being carved out to create the ADU, currently unfinished space, in which case it's not going to be, it's not going to be assessed at a, at a, at a high value, at a finished value, um, or is it finished and it's being repurposed? And either way, if you're adding a kitchen and if you're adding a bathroom, those should be two items, likely two items that are going to create more value, but it's not going to be a boodle of value. Right, right okay. Right. Until we get into the detached ADU discussion, then you're dealing with a separate structure with separate everything right. that is going to create, you know, if you've got a cost that has been estimated to all of us about 300,000 to do a 900 square foot detached ADU, well, that 300,000, if that's the estimate, that's going to be an addition to set assess value. Mm -hmm. um, so question to Melissa is inside currently as, as our ADU bylaw currently exists, um, if somebody finishes carves out, Within the house, nine hundred square feet, or whatever. new space, new well, newly finished, newly finished space. Okay, and they redo it and they build a kitchen and a bathroom within that space. That adds to the value of the the inherent value of the property. But that's going to be picked on up on by the building department when they file the building permit and permits. Well, and what attributes get recorded? on the property card? So all good questions. And we get, um, we have access to the building permits and we review building permits daily. And so any permit with any amount of improvement is something that we review. The conversion of space from unfinished to finished, regardless of the use is something that we would look at and we would value. The, uh, the way it's been so far has been that that use was restricted. The new law is less restrictive. Mm -hmm. So then we may see some value change. But at this point, what we're doing is looking at the cost method, which says this is the cost to reproduce the building. And so by finishing any space, there is an increased cost and therefore an increased value. And so, and in an answer, kitchens and bathrooms have higher inherent and yes cost. the addition of a bathroom increases value the addition of a kitchen increases value to your point as far as how we track it up until now it's been a sort of minor number of properties compared to the, right. the whole so they've been just treated as extra bathroom extra kitchen right. whatever um, but what we're going to be looking at this year in particular with the, so we have two things coming together. The revaluation makes us look at these things exactly, in more yeah, detail and exactly. And, and we now have a change in the rules. So what we're um, contemplating and I suspect will end up is to have not a separate um, classification, not a different number, mm -hmm. but a, an indication within the card, a right. flag within the card that yeah, we yeah. pointed out. Um, not sure exactly where that would go or how the, exactly that would look. It's partially dependent on the software, but the goal would be to be able to identify so that if somebody says, give me a list of all the properties with ADUs, we should be able to do that. Right, right. So, right. Um, then the next level, and I suspect we won't be doing this this year, but because of limited sales, but the next thing that we have to do is analyze the sales of properties with ADUs right. to compare whether or not that actually has changed. We, so, we, we, we won't have a need them. We won't have any kind of numbers in need them comps. What perhaps an outside vendor might know better would be like some typical stuff for how this typically works because i'm sure lexington there are places that have had adus for a long time lexington has had it for a long time plus they also did a thing where they like grandfathered in illegal apartments because i'm sure there are illegal apartments yeah. in need them somewhere yep. um i wouldn't shock me at all i um, close my eyes when i go into those places yeah exactly so uh, those probably exist uh, but there are places that have had ADUs for 20 years, so there must be some knowledge of this. I mean, it seems to me that the two things is one is having a way in the in our our camera that 
picks this up and how, how that happens if there's something for set, but for sure it should have a place that says full kitchen too, somewhere. Or it should have, ideally it would have single, you know, maybe it's just classified as a two family. Maybe that's the easiest way to, um, even though we would say it's not, just, just be, I mean, right now we have a situation where we classify daycares as residential. Now, nobody says, well, because we crossed all the residential, you can therefore, you know, sleep in it. But it's just the way we do it as legal. It's just a way of classifying. So maybe, if, again, this is where the vendor might help, where yeah. it says, is it better to classify it as a two-family just because that way we can, because I'm sure the two-family card has a way to say, here's how much is in the first unit, here's how much is in mm -hmm. the second unit, sure. and you can tease those out. But you would then also indicate it's an ADU in that because because the, again the value of a house with an ADU is probably less than the value of a two family with two apartments. Yeah, right, right. I would. Agree. I would have the question of the Lexingtons and uh, the other towns. How long have they been able to rent those ADUs? Yeah, right. to outside. That's where right. the value comes in. True. Before that, in my opinion, it's actually not a value. It's a deterrent, and a lot of people will remove the right. ADU. Well, it's like a lot of things. It's like a swimming pool, right? Some people are going to be like, oh, great, there's a swimming pool. Some people are like, I've got small kids. Right. I don't want my kid drowning right. in Generally the pool. speaking, it's a, it's a deterrent. That's okay. right. And yeah. I remember an article years ago in The Globe about how once it was considered a big selling point, now it's often a negative. Yeah. Um, because it was a woman I know who was featured in the story, and they had filled in their pool. After they, they spent the extra money to fill it in after they bought it. But ADU, I think, is like that. It's the kind of thing that's going to be a value enhancer for a small number of people and a negative yeah. for a, uh, uh, another number of people. I don't see Needham, um, given it's, it's it's so affluent, that, that people only do it if they really have to. Well, I, I think that what I think what the experience has, I think what the experience is going to be is that. ADUs are going to be built for non-rental reasons. Yeah. And then possibly converted for rental purposes after. And one of the possibilities that people do talk about is the possibility of I have the unit for my parent, the parent passes away or goes into nursing home or whatever. Maybe you leave it vacant for a while, and then maybe at some point the family moves in, the parents move into the ADU, and then the kids move yeah. into the, you know, you could have adult, situations adult like that. Children. With family. Exactly. So a lot of these are that. very, um, in, my in my opinion, very esoteric. They, they, right. They're trying to, the committees that want it are trying to create a reason. Yeah. Um, but the actual, the fact that we only have 12 in Needham says a lot. And I I do believe it's not going to be a big yeah. amount. Is it necessary and is it good? Is it a great option? Yes. Well, I think it's something we just need to make sure yeah. it's valued properly. You know, I think that's yeah. for, for our purposes. And um, I, I always suspect, I mean, this is what I always said. I was, at, you know, I was advocating for it. But I always said, this is, always, this is going to be a very small number. It's going to be very meaningful to a small number of people. Yeah. And for most people, it's going to make no difference to anyone else. Right. Right? But it is nice to have the option in case you ever did want to, you know, carve out a space for, you know, carve out a space for grandma or whatever. Okay, are we ready to go into executive sir? Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, like motion to comply with provisions of a general special law, <clears throat> specifically to discuss real estate and personal property exemption or abatement applications, which are not open to public inspections, or to comply with provisions of a general or special law, specifically to discuss returns to property held for charitable purposes, which are not open to public inspection, or to discuss strategy with respect to litigation of an open meeting that have a detrimental effect on the government's litigating position. So moved. Second. We have a motion a second. Aye. 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 Board Executive. I'm glad I got a job. Thank you. 